want to continue on with the markets now and bring in Brian Jacobson. He is multi-asset strategist at Wells Fargo Asset Management. Brian, always good to see you. I want to uh, stick with this meme uh, theme here for a moment. You know, yesterday we had a market strategist from Zephyr on who said, you know, like it or not, uh, these retail investors who are uh, sending some of these stocks into the stratosphere cannot and should not be ignored. What's your take on that? Well, yeah, on my team, we agree. I mean, monitoring, uh, you know, liquidity in markets and seeing if there's excessive shorting of stocks and seeing if there's going to be some sort of short squeeze. Uh, to me, that's just sort of, uh, you know, basics when it comes to portfolio management and trying to decide when it is that you're going to enter or exit a position. A lot of the portfolio managers that we work with, especially in the small cap space, uh, we're talking about how it is that over the last few months, because of the um, meme trade, that they've actually been able to you know take profits and exit some positions um, you know with some decent gains for our shareholders and so you know it, it they are a force to be reckoned with uh, but also keep in mind that what the swarm gives they can also take as you see with some of the volatility here and so sometimes if the price moves and it's not an informational move uh, it might actually be prudent to uh, take some profits on that so then it sounds like, Brian, you're saying that despite the fact that so many people are saying that, frankly, this is gambling, it's just out and out speculation, that there is money that you would be leaving on the table if you don't get involved in some of these trades with AME or, or AMC, excuse me, or, or GameStop or Bed Bath & Beyond or some of the others. Yeah, you know, that's one of the challenges, though, when you look at the market and you look at the market prices, just because it has moved doesn't mean that it will continue to move in that direction. And so if you were in the position and suddenly, you know, the swarm decides to uh, push the stock higher, you might be able to take that as an opportunity to assess whether or not anything has really changed with the outlook and decide if you should then allocate out of that position or allocate more because maybe they're revealing some information that you did not otherwise have. Um, I don't like the idea of saying that you're leaving money on the table if you're not participating, because then that just sort of encourages people to think, oh, we just got to pile in on this. We have to jump onto that bandwagon. The problem is, is that the bandwagon can tip over pretty quickly and pretty easily. So not every risk is really worth taking. Um, when you look at, say, the Russell 2000, is a lot of these shares, you know, the biggest stock on there, I think only represents less than 1%. It's maybe about 0.7% of the entire Russell 2000. So if you have a well diversified portfolio, uh, playing in that uh, space isn't really going to move the needle too much on your portfolio, except for maybe uh, causing a little bit of stress and anxiety for you as you try to monitor things. That's an excellent point, Brian, because uh, there was a good piece in the journal this morning talking about how even if you wanted to stay away from those meme stocks, you probably got exposed to them because at least AMC and GameStop are part of that Russell 2000 value index that you're referencing. So you sort of took advantage of that uh, whether you wanted to or not. I want to talk about fundamentals for a minute, which doesn't really apply when we talk about these meme stocks, right? And that is the labor market. We got some more encouraging news today. Initial jobless claims falling below 400,000 for the first time since the pandemic began. We also saw private payrolls increase by the most in 11 months. What are your expectations for tomorrow's jobs report? And is it really going to move the market? Well, it could, you know, and it's really going to be about the details as it typically is. Um, so looking at the headline payrolls number, we got the ADP report this morning showing, you know, nearly 1 million jobs being created. And they try to calibrate their number to coincide with, a, be a leading indicator of what you might be able to expect with the payroll number. Now, it's not perfect, but uh, that's actually very much in line with what my expectation is is that it's going to be something close to about a million, especially if you include revisions to last month. So when they release this data, they also include back month revisions. Um, we expect that it's likely going to be revised slightly higher from last month's 250,000 number. So probably pretty strong as far as what the payrolls growth but I think a lot of people are going to be looking at the wages component of there too. What is going on with average hourly wages? Because right, the big meme in the market as well is this growth and inflation dynamic that if we are going to see wages increase at a faster pace, then it could get people worrying a little bit about a pickup of inflation as opposed to maybe this just being somewhat temporary or transitory as the Fed would like to believe. 
All right, Brian Jacobson of Wells Fargo Asset Management, thanks so much for being with us today.